let's get started. Um, it's probably one of the shortest presentations in terms of slides that I ever did. Uh, I think it's just two slides. Uh, <laughs> or three, actually. So it's, really <laughs> it's about made to tag, uh, which should not become as a surprise. Um, and, and just to kind of get, get the focus for this, and as I said, I will not necessarily get into a lot of detail here, but you are free to ask questions anytime. So if you just say, well, what's this about? Just start asking. So PDF, uh, actually, this year is going to be PDF's 20th birthday. So it's 20 years old already. Uh, it was first published in, by Adobe in, in 1993, and Dr. Bud One came out in 1993. Um, so PDF is really good for visual content, as everybody will know. Whether it's packaging or publication printing or office purposes and 3D, uh, 2D drawings uh, in, in computer edit design. <coughs> really good at that and it's been it's been widely used for this purpose um, <clears throat> it's not always as good for semantics so if you want to access the content in the PDF file maybe for pro programmatic reasons for text extraction or for other purposes it can be good but it's not guaranteed to be good um, and one mechanism to, to improve the situation is called tags which was introduced by Adobe in 2001 12 years ago and, and the tags are very similar to HTML tags, and you can add them to the visual content in PDF files um, and, and um, establish semantic access to the content. So, in the simplest case, uh, you have some text, and the text could even be just in, in a picture, like it's just uh, <coughs> pixels in, in an image, or it's just some um, <coughs> outlines, vector outlines, or it's actually text using fonts, but maybe with an interesting encoding, so if you do uh, normal text extraction, you may not get much. Uh, and even if you get something, you may not know what purpose this text is being intended for. Is it a heading? Is it some paragraph? Is it a cell in a table? Is it part of a list and so on? And it's tags and, and some additional mechanisms that make it possible to understand what this piece of content is about. And we'll, we'll work with this for a little bit. But anyway, these tags introduced in 2001 make it possible to establish semantic <coughs> access to the content in the PDF file. And accordingly, tag PDF <coughs> is what we call this today. And if you do the tagging well, of course, you can also get it wrong. And then it's not you're very useful. But if you get it right, if you have a well-tagged PDF, it also becomes an accessible PDF. Accessible for people who have to use additional tools and mechanisms to access the content because they can't see, they can't hear, they can't move very well and so on, um, and also access on a programmatic level for, for smart text extraction or content extraction, repurposing, reformatting, and so on. Um, and the sad thing is uh, tags don't fall from the sky. Somebody has to put them there. So it's not that they <laughs> just show up because you ask for it. It's not one big push button that you have to push that makes them appear. Uh, somebody has to do some thinking. and. The thinking is both on the, on the side of, uh, of the software you're using to produce the PDF, but uh, some of the job also has to happen in, 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 the, in the other type of software also called brainbirds, like in, in the head of somebody who kind of um, uh, tries to understand himself and what he's doing and what the content is about that he may be producing in the PDF file and, and actually where it starts and where it stops. And it sounds very trivial, but it's sometimes not very trivial. Um, and one mechanism to get this, these tags inside the tag PDF file and get it right uh, is Adobe InDesign, especially <coughs> starting uh, CS5.5. Adobe added a few new mechanisms um, that make it much, much easier to inject the tags in, in the PDF content than it was before. Before, you had to use this XML structure tree. And it can be done, but most people think it's not funny. Um, and it's much easier now with, with some of the newer mechanisms, which we will be looking at in just a moment. Um, still looking at InDesign, and even if you had a training, and you know where all the buttons and menus and, and options are that you uh, need to use, uh, it's not very efficient. So you can do it. You can put all the information in the InDesign document, and then you, if you export the PDF, uh, all the good information will show up in the right place as, as tags. Um, it's very cumbersome, you forget stuff, uh, it's very difficult to check whether you did the right thing, and so on. And that's exactly where <coughs> MetaTag kicks in and makes the whole process faster, 
more reliable because you get visual feedback about what you're doing. Um, helps you with a few problems that are more difficult <coughs> to solve without additional help. Um, and makes life much easier. And I think um, of sign it's just the foundation, but it's not really good enough for, for economically viable production. If you only have sign and you have to produce accessible PDF all the time, it's painful, very difficult to make money. Um, if you have a tool like MetaTag, and I think at the moment we are definitely the, the only tool in the market that offers uh, some, some tools in this context. Um, if you have a tool like MetaTag, um, your production can become efficient. So you can actually make money in a reasonable way. Um, so that's kind of the starting point. Uh, and as mentioned, usually I do a two-hour lecture on, on all the theoretical aspects. Um, I would like you to at least remember this slide. It's like, it's like the condensed version of a two-hour talk, or maybe even a, a five-day seminar. Um, there's certain things you should focus on when making an InDesign document accessible. In reality, there's, of course, more details and more aspects and more things you should think about, even especially if you get into more complex documents. But if you get these five aspects right, you have, at minimum, covered 80% of what has to be done. And for a lot of documents, you have covered almost 100%, because not every document <coughs> is complex. Yeah, some of the more complex um, types of content are tables, for example, and tables can become arbitrarily complex. So that's really a challenge even for experienced people. Uh, there doesn't, there's not anything talking about tables, and if you run into documents with complex tables, then you have to do extra work. But 90% um, of the documents that you may run into don't even have a table. So if you get this right, um, or your customers get this right, uh, you're beginning to make a difference. At the moment, most of the PDF documents created in, in, in the graphic arts industry are not, are not very accessible. So the content is just arranged on the page in some way. It shows up in the right way, but it's very difficult for a piece of software or for a person using um, additional technology to access the content to make any good use of the content. And we will recognize that Meto Tag, to a certain degree, has been built around these principles. So sitting on top of InDesign, it uses mechanisms in InDesign and just addresses these five core principles, more or less even in that same order. Now, I would like to go with you through an example document and just do it and explain how it's working in InDesign, how Meta Tag um, makes it easier to do it uh, so that you will begin to get a feeling how this works. Are there any questions so far? Has anybody of you already worked with the tagging possibilities in InDesign or PDF? Okay. What exactly is contrast? In Visual contrast. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So maybe I, uh, maybe I should say a few words about that. Um, so in the end, uh, the, the expectation is that tools like Make2Take will make it more probable that we can create um, accessible PDF files. And these are beginning <coughs> to be asked for more and more. Um, that's partially due to, to um, legal regulations, the laws in some com countries that require that, for example, government agencies must publish their documents in, a, in an accessible fashion. And a PDF that is not well tagged is not accessible. So if you want to publish a PDF in an accessible fashion, you have to take it well. Um, and otherwise, you, you are at least not complying with the law in some countries. In most European countries, I think, at least on the federal level, all government agencies are required to publish all uh, documents, all information, in an accessible fashion. And as you know, like um, starting with flyers, like small pieces, but sometimes also brochures, uh, some of the important information from, from governments is, is published in a printed <coughs> form, and then it's also easy to put the PDF for the printed form on the website. But if it has just been prepared for printing, it's not necessarily accessible. So you have to make it accessible. You make it accessible for people who need easier access to the content. So if people are blind, which is kind of the prototypical case, you can't see and you need to 
have a piece of software read the content to you, and you have to have mechanisms to interact with the software and the documents. So you can jump to different sections in the document. You may also use a Braille display, where, where you have a Braille text being displayed on a line of many small knobs uh, that move up or down. Uh, but interestingly, blind people are the smallest portion of the population of people that have disabilities and need assistive technology. Uh, for example, the people with low vision, so with highly reduced vision, they can still see shapes or something. If they put stuff close to their eyes, they can recognize shapes and actually read text and things like that. It's already four or five times as many people than blind people. And in, in, in public, you sometimes don't realize a, per a person has very low vision because they, they have learned how to <coughs> deal with the environment. They just walk around like everybody else. <laughs> Instead of recognizing Boris, for example, they just see there's a muddy shape. <laughs> So nothing wrong with you, <laughs> it's, um, but it's and, and so they can they can behave. And sometimes you if, you, if they don't tell you, you don't realize. But it, they can actually see much, but they can see something. So when they want to read, sometimes they still use screen reading technology to just have the tag being spoken out loud to them. Yeah, but sometimes they want to really see themselves because it's really much nicer to have at least some vision left, and uh, they just have to move something in, in very large print close to their eyes and they can read it. And you can do this with computers. So you can just enlarge this so it uh, can make this very, very big. But then navigation becomes a pain. So there's this assistive technology that helps you navigate. Just go through the text in this mm -hmm. zooming factor. And of course the tool that helps you do this needs some information. Where does the text start? Where does it continue? Where's the next part of the column? Is it the next column on the same page or maybe on the next page? And then you have other people, like um, uh, learning disabilities, dyslexia, so difficulty to read. Uh, uh, I will have the numbers later today in my presentation. There's quite a few people, and that's a big problem when, when you're kids or, or, or young, young people who are still learning. And they, in, in any other regard, they may just be very normal, normal normally intelligent. But reading is, is a challenge. And if, if you don't uh, address this, it will impact all the other learning. So they may, may become bad pupils in mathematics, not because they can't uh, ha get the numbers right, because they can't read. A lot of the communication in our society is based on written text. So you can, you can help them. And you have people who have limited mobility. So they can read this very easily. But it's very difficult for them to tell the software, go to the next piece of content. And they may need a special joystick or a special keyboard or this and that. And if the software and the content that the software is displaying does not offer access to the content in a, in a, in a semantic fashion, including reading order and things like that, it's very difficult for them to interact with the, with the content. Um, and again, I will have more precise numbers in the presentation later today. But that's why, why you would need this. And that's how you actually put this to use. 